I should be in the English channel. I hope that's all right. Great. Yes, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Recording in progress. Yes. I Yep, I can hear you loud and clear, and I'm now I'm now recording the English, and someone should be recording. Uh, ไม่ครับอุ้ยอุ้ยครับคนอันเข้ามานั่งใกล้ๆอันใดบ่บ่ได้ยินนะอุ้ยเสียงมันเป็นฟาวๆไว้ไอ้จัสอินฟอร์ม
เป็นอีกโรเอียนเนาะเราจะฟองต้นเป็นหลังจากที่ไม่เราเป็นหัวใจโอเค if there's at any point some difficulty please do let me know I'm Very pleased to to join my colleagues, some of whom just visit us us quite recently, um, and many others as well, to share some of the research that we've been doing. Um, my goal here is to to share some very recent research um, to to let you know about the findings, but also to share two aspects. One is to talk about intervention. Um, design and some considerations that we put into when we design nutritional interventions, and the other is to talk about an experience with randomized control trials. Um, and both of those um, were done in Tanzania, which is um, in East Africa, and I'll, I'll share a bit more about that. Um, okay. Um, again, let me know if you have any issues in, in seeing things, but I'll get started here. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so first what I need to acknowledge is that this project, um, which is called Engaging Fathers for Effective Child Nutrition and Development in Tanzania, we called it the Effects Study. Um, and it was a very large team that involved many people um, in many different institutions. Um, this included a, an NGO named Global Communities that was active in Tanzania as well as many other countries. Um, my colleagues at Purdue University and at Harvard University. And then in Tanzania, we worked with the National Institute for Medical Research and the Africa Academy for Public Health. Um, we also benefited from several donors that supported all of this work. Um, in addition to these many people, we had many field workers, enumerators, um, people who were developing and delivering interventions or collecting data. Um, this photo here has just a few of them as well. So I, I don't have all their names, but there's quite a large team for which I'm, I'm quite grateful. So what was this study about? Um, if you have, um, if you're working in this field or if you have seen um, our first module in our project um, about kind of introduction to nutrition ideas, what I'm about to show you, I think will look familiar. This is a, a conceptual framework from a Lancet series now um, almost 10 years ago that looked at what were kind of the determinants of optimal child nutrition and development. Um, we are interested in, in nutrition and development in the young child for as a principle and of itself for the well-being of the child but also because nutrition and development has strong effects on, on health and even mortality in childhood, as well as outcomes later in life. So as a child moves through school, um, into adulthood, um, looking at their health, their well-being, their productivity even, um, are influenced by these early exposures. So then if we think about what are these determinants, um, what we know is that the, the very immediate determinants are basically what a child will eat, the um, burden of infectious disease, and then the various caregiving practices, whether that is infant and young child feeding, um, parenting practices, playing, and communication with children, all of those aspects within um, families and among caregivers also are contributing to both nutrition and development. There are a lot of um, interventions that target these kind of immediate causes of um, good nutrition and development. And sometimes we refer to them as nutrition specific interventions or programs. Those are things like dietary supplementation, um, micronutrient supplementation, you know, prevention of disease and so on. But these important kind of immediate determinants of nutrition and development um, have beneath them more underlying factors. So in order to have a good diet, for example, we need food security. We need to have access for a family to have good, healthy, nutritious food. We need to have various resources available to the family so that they can care for children. We need a healthy environment where there is clean water, where there's sanitation and hygiene, where there are health, basic health services and so on. And so the interventions that deal with these underlying causes are sometimes referred to as nutrition sensitive. So they might not be truly within the health sector, they might be in agriculture or in child education or development. They could be a safety net, 
program um, or deal with water sanitation and hygiene. So these things that might be operating in other sectors deal with these underlying factors that will then affect ultimately a child's nutrition and development. So that's the kind of framework that we're working under. Um, and then what we did here is realize that there is a lot of evidence around nutrition intervention and programs. We know they can be this nutrition specific or nutrition sensitive. We know that, um, let's move this here, um, many early childhood development interventions and programs will focus on parenting practices, how parents interact with their children. Um, and if you were joining this seminar series a couple of months ago, my colleague Shishmita Ghosh talked about some aspects of early child development as well. We will see more of that here. We know that nutrition and parenting interventions and programs are usually separated, but there, as you can see, there's a lot of relationships. There are shared risk factors, shared underlying factors that contribute to children's outcomes. Um, so it might make sense to put these interventions together. However, these can then become too difficult, too unwieldy, or too much for participants. So that's one um, uncertain question. The other thing we know is that many of these types of interventions and programs focus on mothers, but fathers have a very important role in a family. They make decisions about resources and activities and practices within the household, and these affect children as well. But interventions don't necessarily always engage fathers. So those are the gaps that we wanted to study. Um, and we had two important kind of primary research questions. One is, we agree that, that intervening with mothers makes sense for small children, but will engaging fathers in addition improve outcomes for children? That was the first question. The second question is whether interventions should only focus on nutrition or is there an added benefit now of bringing in parenting interventions and putting them together with nutrition interventions? So we did this work in Tanzania. Um, Tanzania is a country in East Africa. Here's a, a map of the country. So here is the Indian Ocean. Uh, to the north, it's Kenya. Um, and um, uh, Lake Victoria is right around here. This is an area that has um, quite a lot of childhood malnutrition, very high rates of child stunting, um, even higher rates of anemia in children. IYCF or infant and young child feeding practices are, are not necessarily optimal. And especially as we move into this kind of complementary feeding period in this age of six to 23 months, we see very few children that meet kind of recommendations for child feeding. The study was conducted, let's see, there we go, in Mara region, which is in this northern part here near the Kenyan border and near Lake Victoria. The rate of stunting there is 29%, um, plus or minus at that time. Um, there's also, and though this data is sometimes more difficult to obtain, there's also high rates of, of, kind of developmental delays for children. Um, and it is also a, a traditional area. Um, so there are norms, social norms and practices that are more patriarchal. Um, and that becomes relevant for reasons that you will see. So our approach in dealing with child nutrition and development in this area was this. Um, first, we did some qualitative formative research to develop our interventions. And those interventions were really focused on social and behavior change. And we made um, a significant effort to make sure those interventions were tailored, were appropriate for that region of the country. We developed the interventions using the evidence that we generated from our formative research. And then we delivered the interventions by training community health workers. So this was a very intentional part. Um, what we wanted was interventions that could be integrated into existing health services. And therefore, we did not want to hire separate people to deliver the interventions. We wanted to work with the, 
the group of community health workers that are already working in communities. So that was an intentional part of the design. The other part was to work with peer groups of mothers and fathers. So instead of working one-on-one, -on -one, we worked with um, groups of mothers and groups of fathers who would work with the community health worker um, and receive these social and behavior change interventions. And then to know whether the interventions are having a, an effect on child outcomes, we evaluated these interventions using a cluster randomized control trial. So the formative research um, was indeed very qualitative with in-depth interviews with different, um, with different family um, members. We looked at mothers, fathers. We also looked at older children grandparents, community health workers, and local leaders. We did various exercises in group discussions and we had many group discussions. Um, we also visited homes and made home observations. And finally, we did market surveys. These are very rural areas. Um, you can see from some of the photos, the environment that people are, are, are living in, it's quite rural. Um, Agriculture is the main activity. People might have some very small farms um, or they might seek employment working on a larger farm. So they might receive a daily um, wage for doing that kind of work. Um, there, it's a very dry area. So water can be challenging um, depending on the time of year. Um, and there is a fairly high degree of poverty as well, so uh, many challenges that, that families are facing. Um, and then here, ultimately, when we designed our interventions, this is what it looked like. Um, when we had fathers, here's a group of fathers. Um, this man here is a community health worker and they will pick a place um, in their village. So this is actually um, a church in this community. And so they will get together um, we designed some materials and some activities here that I'll, I'll give you more details about that. Um, and as much as possible, um, in almost every case, um, when we had fathers, we tried to have a, a man as a community health worker. Um, when we had mothers, we tried to have a woman as a community health worker so that um, the, the parents and the health worker can talk openly and freely um, about the issues that come up. Here's another photo of, of one of our peer groups. So this is um, in a local school. After the school is finished, the mothers come. Um, this woman here is the community health worker. And then these are the mothers. We worked with mothers with very young children. So sometimes um, they will bring their children and need to hold them while they're doing the intervention. Um, you see this, if you can see um, this woman um, who is a participant, she's holding us piece of paper where she took some notes. They did some um, small group discussions and now she's reporting um, the discussion to the larger group. Um, so she has some literacy, but not all mothers and not all fathers are as comfortable um, having literacy. So what you will see is that a lot of our intervention materials are just discussion um, and just pictures, not so much reading. And that is to, to make everyone comfortable. You might also notice um, the mothers look more tired. Um, you know, they have small children, they're very busy. Um, and this was kind of sometimes common. Um, so we were interested in both nutrition and child development. Um, in, in these types of studies, we identify something, we, we will have many kinds of outcomes, um, but we will have, um, but we'll have multiple outcomes, but we will um, identify outcomes that are primary. So the primary study outcomes um, were child dietary diversity, which is a, um, a substitute or a proxy for nutritional quality. So the more diverse a diet is, usually there's more nutrient content. And so that would relate to a child's um, nutrient intake and ultimately nutritional status. So dietary diversity is a very common outcome for us. Um, and it's a very simple measure. We look at um, <clears throat> groups of food and how many are eaten in a 24 hour period. Um, these are the groups that we used. We used eight of them. 
Um, and again, eating more groups is, is considered better and desirable. Um, it's a little bit different from what is used sometimes in other studies, and I can we can go into the technical details if you're interested. Um, early childhood development, if you um, attended um, Shushmita Ghosh's seminar, you would know that that is a, something that sometimes is difficult to measure. Um, we use the Bailey scale um, of infant and toddler development that looked at, usually that involves four domains, um, but we focused on three domains, which was cognitive development, language development, and motor development. And so now the question is, um, these are the things that we want to change. These are the outcomes we want to improve. And this is how we propose to improve them by gathering parents together and having some activity or discussion or something. Um, so the important question is, how is this kind of activity going to improve something for a baby? Um, and so based on our formative research, we not only um, developed our interventions, but we also made our theory of change. So this was the project's um, theory of change. And this may look a little bit complicated, but I can, I can describe it as we go. Um, these boxes here are the true intervention. Those are, oops, sorry. Um, those are the father's peer groups and the mother's peer groups. And over here are the outcomes that we were interested in. So we're interested in nutrition, child development. As a secondary outcome, we were also interested in morbidity of children. Um, and what we have is to identify how we can go from here to here. And this is our hypothesis. Um, and this we use for both intervention development and um, a way to, and developing our evaluation methods. So what we said was we think that there are some major pathways. The first one is a nutrition pathway. How do we improve nutrition? We have a good diet in the child that is achieved when parents um, know and do good um, recommended feeding practices for the child. Um, how can they do good feeding practices for the child? Well, they need to have access to food, um, to healthy food in enough quality and enough quantity. Um, and how is that done? Well, um, there's really two sources, right? They can, because some of these people are farmers, they might have crops or livestock that help them um, access healthy food. So it comes from their farm or they go to the market and they make choices. In order to, to really work with markets, um, they need to have money, right? They need to budget the money for this purpose of buying food and so on. So all this is one method. We think that if we intervene with mothers and fathers, their behavior from what they grow at home and how they interact with markets will change, ultimately improving the diet of the child and improving nutritional status. The other pathway that we were interested in, we were interested in child development. We know parenting is important. Um, and so there are various knowledges and practices that are, are useful here um, that could lead to better development in particular. So that's another pathway. Um, but underneath all of these are some issues around gender. Um, so knowing how mothers and fathers make decisions together to allocate resources to feed every member of the family, um, knowing that there are sometimes gender inequalities where the, the woman um, or the mother may not have all the choices and those come from her husband or her partner. Um, that is one aspect that we had to address and, we, and you'll see how we um, tried to address this in different ways. Um, the other part of this is, is the kind of psychosocial aspects of what's happening. We know that people, um, especially when they live in a very challenging environment, they might have stress, um, they might have poor mental health, they might have you know, even depression, they might have low self-efficacy, meaning that um, they want to make some changes, but they don't feel the power to make changes for themselves. They don't have the confidence or they're just, they're not very sure. Um, so all of these kinds of things um, 
can also underlie these behavior changes that ultimately lead to the well being of the child. So it's really quite a complicated process, but I think um, whatever context you're working in, you know, this is the nature of families um, and how change happens within families. So we wanted to make sure we address this properly. So we developed different intervention packages because we had different research questions. The kind of standard package is a nutrition package that is targeted towards mothers. Um, then we wanted to look at this additional value of bringing in parenting. Um, and we also wanted to do both of those packages for fathers as well. And for each of these packages, then we had mother and father groups that worked with community health workers um, and they would meet twice a month. Um, so they would have a session, they would gather in the community and do the activity twice every month. Um, the intervention was targeting 12 months and everything was rolling very smoothly until the pandemic became a problem. Um, and we had to, um, and this was towards the end of the intervention, we had to stop the peer groups, of course, because we don't want um, a problem with infection. And so, um, so then we had to go for a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, where a, a health worker would go to every house and just to meet outdoors outside the house um, and deliver the intervention in an individual basis. Um, prior to that issue, when we were meeting in peer groups, if for some reason somebody did not come to a session, then the community health worker would go to the house and deliver the intervention um, individually. The intervention packages, um, I'll, I'll give you some example materials here, but the, the intervention packages were not just trying to give information because information is important, knowledge is important, but, um, but more is usually necessary for behavior change. So we tried to employ a range of behavior change techniques in how we delivered the intervention. Um, and these are, you know, have worked in other contexts, they are evidence-based, so they're different strategies for um, encouraging behavior change that might involve discussion, building skills, solving problems together, um, encouraging people to think and reflect and discuss about problems, supporting one another. Um, sometimes when there's a, a challenge for one mother, another mother will have a solution. And that's can be very effective, right? Because they live in the same community, they have the same challenges. So if one woman has an answer for another woman, that can be the, the best solution for that woman. So trying to encourage these things um, as much as possible. We tried to make our interventions gender transformative, meaning that we wanted to specifically address gender norms. And so that was a cross-cutting issue in all of the intervention packages. It especially targeted fathers, um, as you'll see in certain ways. So we had our theory of change. We have our intervention materials, which I'll show more of in a minute. Um, but based on the theory of change, we can identify priority behaviors that we're trying to change. So some things, um, you know, when you're thinking about nutritional outcomes will seem very obvious to you. So, you know, providing micronutrient rich foods, for example, um, feeding the child in a responsive way, you know, those things make, you know, I think makes sense for nutrition. Um, but then there are other things as well. So looking at water, sanitation and hygiene, having clean drinking water, um, being hygienic, preparing food, and so on. Those things will reduce infection, which will also um, improve the nutritional status of the child. We also looked at gender issues. Um, you can see we also looked at some of those psychosocial issues. So all of these target behaviors um, relate to the theory of change. So how discussing how people are, mothers and fathers are handling stress, um, if they are feeling angry, how they handle that anger. Um, and then depending on whether um, there's also a parenting component, there might be specific behaviors there as well. So disciplining a child, being responsive to a child, um, playing with a child, um, communicating in different ways. Those were all kind of parenting related behaviors that we tried to promote. Now, 
I'm just going to show you a few pieces of the intervention packages because they were quite extensive. They involved 24 sessions for, for every um, group, and there were four groups. Um, so this, in the Mothers in Nutrition Intervention, this is the um, first five sessions. Um, and each of them looked um, something like this. So, so they, they would have multiple activities. This is a sort of schedule that we had, and this is just page one um, of multiple pages. The first three sessions are kind of illustrated here for the four different groups. And each session might have multiple objectives. Um, so, you know, so the intervention development um, is really quite a, it, it's a lot of work. Um, it, in a randomized trial, it, it's not that it's a small aspect to do intervention development and then a big issue to do the randomized control trial. This, this was also um, quite a lot of effort. Um, so then every community health worker had a facilitator guide. Um, this is the first page of one of the, um, I think this is the mother's nutrition um, session. So for example, in session, first session, there are three things that people did. There might be some preparations that the community health worker should do. And there's guidelines, there's learning objectives, there's materials that they should bring. Um, you see this in English. Um, of course, it's in the local language, which is key Swahili. Um, but this is the translated version. So you can kind of see what kind of uh, materials they had. And of course, we were um, careful to train the community health workers well and to give um, supportive supervision as they did these interventions. Now, this is um, complicated and appropriate for a health worker. For a participant, this is too much, of course. Um, so this is what a participant sees. So they, we had a flip chart for them. Um, and I just want to share a few of the um, pieces of the flip charts from the different interventions. So for example, um, in the first session for the mothers, this was, um, this was an image that was used. It would be on a big um, chart and everyone would look at the pictures and then the community health worker would just have a conversation. Um, so this was kind of identified as an early stage of the intervention, kind of building and reflecting on the identity of the mother and the various roles that she does, um, which will then be addressed in the intervention. So we have a woman, she's a mother, um, she's a wife or partner, um, she has friends, she's part of a community, she's probably also does some farming or is a farmer. So she has many roles and then that is discussed. Um, we spent um, a lot of time and this was supported by the qualitative research of how to draw these images. So we worked with an artist to make sure that um, the images are appropriate for that community. You know, these are crops that would be grown in that community. This dress would be a common way of dressing. Um, this would be a common method of transportation. Um, so people can have a good connection to the pictures that they are seeing. Um, here's another um, picture that was used in the intervention. So this is to talk about how to feed a baby that is seven to nine months. Um, and again, this there's very little words. Those would be in Swahili. Um, this is the English version, of course. So how to feed a baby at that age, we, you know, we recommend breastfeeding but you can start um, some soft foods, recommend kind of the frequency, when children should be fed, what is the consistency of the food. Um, we don't want to go into a lot of detail about nutrition, right? We don't want to explain vitamin and mineral. People don't need to know that. Um, we basically recommended fruits and vegetables, um, animal foods, and kind of starches and staple foods. Um, here's hand washing of baby and of mother. Um, here's, you know, a suggested way of feeding the baby. Here's um, some toys that you can make in the village um, that are easy, you know, put some rocks inside a bottle and then the baby can shake. So things like that, that makes the eating um, experience positive for the baby. Um, those are all parts of the intervention. Um, here's one of the uh, materials for water, um, kind of water sanitation and hygiene. So these were common sources of water, how to keep water clean, 
um, how to treat water. These are common ways of transporting water in these communities. And what you can see is that these are um, very gendered. So a woman might carry water, but a man, if he gets involved, he might use a, a wheelbarrow. He might use a cart with animals. Um, a woman is not likely to do these things in this, in this area. Um, so it would not be appropriate to show a woman kind of doing this kind of work. So even though we are trying to be gender transformative, we also want to fit um, the culture appropriately. Um, here is part of some content for the fathers. So this was about communication between um, mother and father to improve the family. So again, we're being sensitive to the gender norms. So here's a man, he's doing um, the household budget um, and, the, and his wife is making some comments and giving some suggestions. So we recognize that it will probably be the husband who is making this budget, but she should be involved, she is aware. Um, here's a man who's saving some money but she is also involved in that decision um, and so on. So that's communication between husband and wife or between mother and father. Um, here's another one that is more gendered. This is, um, notice how it says the best fathers for a clean and safe home environment. So here you have a baby, but there's some mat for them to walk so they can stay clean. Um, the reason why this is for fathers is <clears throat> For example, if you have chicken, um, their feces can go everywhere and that, you know, expose the baby um, to unhealthy things, right? Or if you have a cooking fire, um, then that could be dangerous for the baby. But to build this kind of structure or to build this kind of gate or to build a shelf to put things too high for baby, these kinds of building, that is more of a father's job. Um, a, a woman will not decide that she's going to build a structure like this. So, so this is why the thought, this content is really meant for fathers. Here's um, disposal of animal feces. Um, similarly, that's more of a, a man's role in this community. Um, this is another interesting one. Um, in this area, it, it's not common for men to buy fruits and vegetables. Usually that's a woman's work and not considered appropriate for men. Um, so a man would not usually do something like this. However, there was a, a norm in the community that a man is responsible for the health of his family. Um, so if to improve the health of his family, he buys fruits and vegetables, then suddenly it becomes something for a man's domain. Um, and so, so this is what we are trying to gently um, improve um, the father's increasing access to nutrition for the household. Um, the, the cultural context is, of course, very important, and I'm sure uh, several of you have done interventions as well. But for example, here we have a pig. Um, we had a long discussion about this picture um, because for some religions, the pig is not appropriate. But in this area, it was mostly a Christian area. Um, this pig was okay. But we, you know, all of these things we really try to be careful about in developing things. Um, okay, so, sorry, there we go. Okay, so that is the intervention. There are many other um, parts of these materials and we have them available um, to share if you're interested. But here now the question is, well, are these interventions effective? And so we evaluate these using a cluster randomized control trial. Um, so the idea of this is that it's controlled, meaning that there is um, a part of our evaluation where there is no intervention. There is community health workers, they do their usual work, but they don't do this intervention material. And then we have other places that are getting the different intervention material. Um, it is cluster randomized because villages, we had 80 villages in our study area, we randomly allocated them into five groups, um, but we allocated the village, not the individual household, because these things are, these interventions are delivered to groups. Um, and we can talk more about that design if you are, are interested. So the idea is that we have five groups of villages, 16 villages in each, and then they get different interventions. So some 
only have mothers engaged. Others have the couple, the mother and the father, um, and then they might get nutrition or they might get nutrition and parenting content. Um, and so that's our design. I wanted to share this picture because I, I wanted you to understand the environment. As you can see, um, it is a place where there is a lot of poverty. Um, it is very rural. Um, it's very dry. Um, so the farms are not always productive when there is not enough water. Um, that's challenging for people when they want to have water for home use. Um, and it's challenging for their livestock sometimes as well. Um, the people who participated in our study, all at the beginning of the study, they had a young child under 18 months. The mother and the father were present. They were going to stay present for the whole study. They were willing to participate in a peer group. We also wanted to make sure that the father was present for at least 10 months per year. So sometimes the father will go to the big city to work or will go fishing because there's Lake Victoria is very close by. So they would go for one month to go fishing and come back. Um, but we wanted the father to be present. We did not require marriage, um, but we did require that the father is living with the mother and the baby. And of course we had informed consent. And then we collected data before the intervention, in the middle of the intervention and after the intervention. We would collect data from mothers, fathers, and children in every household. We had 960 households. Um, sometimes these were questionnaires. We tried to, whenever possible, we tried to separate mother and father so that we could ask each one um, somewhat personal questions. Um, we also did anthropometry on children, and we did the um, Bailey's um, assessment for child development. Those usually had to be done in a central location that required some extra training from the um, accessors. Um, what we found um, by the end of the study, <clears throat> and this was after COVID and everything else, um, we had fair retention of mothers and children. Um, retention of fathers was lower, but not terrible. So we were we were happy with that. Engaging fathers is indeed challenging. We would love to discuss that more with you. Um, we also had many other, we had our primary outcomes of dietary diversity and child development, but we also had many secondary outcomes around nutrition, um, around parenting, and then around women's empowerment and gender equity um, in different sorts of ways. So what I will share with you are, um, because we only have so much time, I will only share with you some of these results, um, but I'm happy to talk more about the findings. We also did a process evaluation, which, um, which is kind of looking at implementation. Um, for now, just in the interest of time, I'll, I'll skip over this, um, but again, happy to discuss. We, we looked at um, implementation using a dashboard, um, and again, so this allowed us to do some real-time supervision of the community health workers. Um, again, glad to discuss that. But let's talk about the research questions. So now let me make the research questions a little bit more formal. Um, so the first question we can ask is, does any kind of intervention improve an outcome that we are interested in? So what we can do to answer that question is to compare these all these intervention arms to a control arm, right? Compare the green on average to this yellow color. Another question we can ask is, is working with couples, having both mother and father, improving an outcome more than just having mothers only? So again, we can compare the green to this orange color, okay? The third question is, does bundling the content affect an outcome differently than nutrition-only content. So again, here's the bundled nutrition and parenting. How does the green compare to this orange? And now there's one last question, which is, does the effect of the father engagement depend on the content? So for example, if we make this comparison that you see here, um, this would be the effect of engaging fathers when we deliver nutrition content. 
This comparison, the blue one, would be the effect of father engagement when we have the bundled content. And so one question we can ask is, are these two effects the same? Um, so that's our fourth research question. For those of you, um, maybe you've seen this and have done a lot of data analysis, this um, in statistical terms, this is an interaction effect. So here's um, the first of the results. <clears throat> And all my results are going to have the similar format. So let me just explain a little bit more here. Um, here, I'm looking at 24-hour child dietary diversity. So that is measured as the number of food groups out of eight food groups consumed in a 24-hour period. And we look at the average in the five arms from baseline to end line. Um, the numbers all increase. And that's not surprising. Here, the kids are the children are below 18 months. Here, they're much older. So as children get older, they eat more things. Um, that is not surprising. Um, what is interesting is to see which arms are separating themselves and then looking at these individual research questions. So what we find here is this last, this top arm where there is father engagement and bundled content. When we do both of those things, we see the biggest increase. And that's especially true compared to the control. So that's where we see this question. So the, the real strength here is not simply doing father engagement or doing the bundled content, but doing both. Um, and there we see actually quite significant um, increases in child dietary diversity. And if we look at this, um, this is in a one day period. If we look at this over seven days, um, that increase becomes even more marked. So um, there's a benefit of doing both types of interventions. Um, here's child growth. Um, these look, this is length for age C scores. Um, we still have progressive uh, faltering of linear growth. Um, overall, the interventions did not affect child growth. I don't have a graph here, but here's weight for height as well. There was something significant when we looked at all the interventions versus the control, but when we did some adjusted models, that effect kind of disappeared. Um, so our conclusion here really was that child growth was not, not significantly affected by the interventions as measured by height or weight. Here are, now I'm gonna look at some behaviors that lead to good nutrition for a child. So here is mothers um, saving money to purchase healthy foods. Here we saw any intervention improving this behavior. Mothers were more likely, um, it, whatever the interventions they got, they were more likely to put, put aside money to purchase healthy foods. And um, fathers were more likely to purchase special foods for their children. Um, when we asked um, about fathers growing new food, so changing um, their home garden or their farm to grow something new for the specific purpose of improving the family diet, we see that especially when you have um, father engagement, um, we see that fathers were then more likely to cultivate something new to improve the family diet. Here's another example. Um, this is looking at fathers getting involved in food preparation. Now, this is a very strong gender norm, right? That usually mothers are doing this kind of work, but fathers can sometimes support. Um, fathers who, um, who were engaged, and particularly those who got this bundled content, were more likely to contribute to preparation of children's food. Here's something around water, sanitation, and hygiene. There we found all interventions had a positive effect on households consuming clean water. Um, and it's actually quite substantial. The black line here is the control. Um, the blue lines are the bundled content. The red lines are the nutrition-only content. This was a little bit interesting because what you see here is that all these interventions positively affected um, clean and safe water in the household, but there's a slightly bigger um, improvement when you deliver only the nutrition. The nutrition content um, would give more emphasis to water 
um, when we bring in the bundled content, because it's the same amount of time, we have to reduce the time that's spent discussing water um, in order to make time for the parenting content. So that did reduce the effect a little bit, but not a lot. Um, there were some other significant effects around knowledge um, of both infant and young child feeding and water sanitation and hygiene. Um, we also saw some effects on um, morbidity. They were kind of marginal, but significant. Um, we found that bundled content made it less likely for um, children to um, experience symptoms of illness. It might especially be symptoms related to respiratory infection, so um, fewer reports of coughing. Um, but then there were certainly many other outcomes that we looked at um, where we did not see changes. Um, so in terms of food allocation within the household or, or mother fathers giving money to mothers for foods or so on, um, there were not significant effects. I'm going to just very briefly talk about um, the child development. Um, there's a lot more outcomes, and I think sometimes it's it's a lot. So to just to summarize, um, in the child development, we found significant effects um, from bundling the content, from providing parenting did improve child cognitive development. This is based on a standardized score using the Bailey's um, tool. So the bundled content did result in, in higher scores for the child compared to um, the nutrition only content and the control. Um, these effects, um, while significant, there are somewhat smaller than other ECD interventions. Um, and that's not surprising, right? Because the parenting is only one component of a large intervention package, but we did see significant effects here. Um, similarly, for child's receptive languages, we saw this effect of doing parenting interventions that exceeded the outcomes from nutrition only and control. Now, there, we saw a lot of changes actually in these, um, you know, the gender was an important part of these interventions. So I just want to show you a few gender related outcomes. Um, we asked about gender attitudes in both mothers and fathers. What we found here was when fathers were engaged, we saw um, kind of more gender equitable attitudes developing over time among fathers. So among fathers here, um, shifting their beliefs towards more equity um, and in their relationship and in the roles between man and woman in the household. Similarly, when fathers were engaged, the attitudes of women also changed. Um, with this kind of gender transformative curriculum. Here's a few other outcomes related to gender. Um, we looked at time use in this population for both mother and father. Um, we saw that fathers, when they were engaged, also increased how much they contributed to domestic activities. So domestic activities might be cooking, cleaning, caring for the child, um, different types of home activities um, and chores. We also saw that communication increased um, and specifically engaging fathers when there is a bundled um, content. Doing both those interventions together was effective in increasing communications between um, mother and father compared to the other interventions in particular to the control. And I think this might be my last one. Let's see. Um, we looked at decision-making power. This is household decision-making power for the mother. Um, and this is measured in number of topics. We had a list of eight topics that um, households make decisions on. Um, mothers, when, when fathers were engaged, what we found was that mothers then reported being able to make um, more contribution to household decisions than when fathers were not involved in the intervention. So really there was a lot of changes and um, in some of these underlying gender outcomes and they came when we also engaged fathers that there were benefits both for mother and for father. 
and ultimately for children. So just to summarize, because these are a lot of outcomes and, and there were many more um, that I don't really have time to share, but I'm happy to discuss. Um, we saw positive effects across, if you think back to our theory of change, we had different pathways. Oops, sorry. Um, we had different pathways of looking at kind of food and nutrition, of looking at parenting, of looking at gender and psychosocial well-being of mother and father. So we, for all of these pathways, we see benefits when we engage fathers, when we combine content that is nutrition and parenting. And for some things, what we really see is that when we do both, um, we see even more benefit than we expected. So just in conclusion, there's this positive effect of doing both things, of engaging fathers, of doing integrated content that can improve um, improve nutritional and developmental outcomes. Um, I didn't share this with you, but um, I can just talk about it. We saw that the diets of children improved when we did both things together. This was also true for diets of mothers in these families. Um, and so when we do these things together, we might also improve parenting behaviors, which support early childhood development. And then finally, having this focus on gender um, in, in our intervention design can improve um, or advance gender equity and women's empowerment while also improving the well being of the child and the outcomes for the child. And to see these positive effects, we can see that they're really operating through multiple pathways. Um, so I'll stop there and I will go and be glad to ask and see what your questions are. Perhaps I can stop sharing um, so I can see you all better. Any brave person? I hope you're hearing. <laughs> okay, um, Dr. So. Hi, Ninopa. Uh, <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> great talk. I mean, it was very fascinating. Very, very fascinating. And I mean, just amazing work there. Um, I was just curious. Uh, I'm going to try not keep it too technical, but um, so, um, so I was curious to, 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 to see if you guys were um, worried or if there were any evidence of interference, right? So as you, as you um, perform intervention in those villages, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes my experience, right, is, is, is that uh, sometimes those villages find a way to converge maybe in a big market and stuff where, you know, people who are receiving intervention might potentially talk to people who are not receiving the intervention and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So is it an evidence of such a thing? And if it were, how do you learn about, you know, eliminating that? Right, yes. So when you were doing an evaluation, this is a, a really good question. Um, if somebody is in a control group, but they have a friend who is in an intervention group, people will naturally talk. Um, and that's especially true for a community health worker. Their job is to talk and to share information, right? Um, and so that's why we did this cluster randomized trial. Um, it, the cluster randomization means that in this village, um, there are some people who are getting the intervention, some people are not, but they're not part of the study. Um, so everybody in the village who is part of the study are getting the same intervention. So if they talk, that's fine. Um, if, they, if the community health worker shares some knowledge or some ideas with people not in the intervention, that's okay. That's actually kind of an extra positive benefit 
um, because the intervention can benefit more people that way. But it's much less likely, um, and, and this is a sparse area, you know, there's some distance between communities and so on. Um, so it's very possible that the next village is a control village and my sister is there and I go and talk to her and, you know, we chat and so you can have what's called spillover, um, but it's much less likely. Um, so you can't stop it because people are free to to talk and to share right. knowledge, but um, but it's minimized by the cluster randomization, and that was one of the many many reasons why we cluster randomized. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Dwi, yes. Hello, good morning from Indonesia. Uh, good good morning. morning, Dr. Everybody and Dr. Gunaratna. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Nutrition uh, Center of Laos, to in, uh, inviting us. Uh, even though it's in the last minute, uh, but we are very pleased to have your very, very challenging research, yeah, and very intensive and comprehensive. Uh, Please allow me to. Uh, this is only my uh, the things that I like to further more know about your research. Uh, we know that uh, in the disadvantaged condition, you're very poor uh, community. Uh, you do integrated. In, you did integrated uh, intervention, and you like to know about the growth. That is very challenging. Uh, as we know that the agriculture condition, for example, the season, the weather, mm -hmm. as well as the infectious uh, disease of uh, the uh, of the area of the community will be the challenge, the big challenge. Yeah. So how you uh, consider uh, these issues? This is my first question. Allow me to ask two. <laughs> and the second, perhaps. <laughs> so how you? Uh, the uh, season uh, mm -hmm. because they are agriculture area right, right and also yeah. the infectious disease mm -hmm. because they will be prone to these issues the children right yes. and also the second is maybe uh, I also interest to know about the communication because this is challenge yeah how uh, the fathers uh, and the, uh, the mothers communicate and so that they can have a uh, good decision making in related to food, particularly. So, how you sorry, maybe I uh, often look this how you uh, assess uh, mm -hmm. that uh, they really have good communication mm -hmm. uh, in uh, related to your research questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that's all. Oh, these thank are great questions. You. Yes. So, um, so seasonality very relevant um, in this area. Um, the timing, so the, the technical answer, of course, is that it is a randomized trial. You have five parallel arms. And so even though seasonality is operating, we expect it to operate in similar ways for each arm so that it's still a valid comparison. Um, however, the other part of that is we did try to have um, when you look at baseline and in line roughly at the same time of year so you know the the seasons are comparable um i mean of course you can't control that 100% but you know at least we tried to have the timing similar um but there is a lot of seasonality um i have a colleague who has been looking at availability of food in markets um and actually found market availability relatively constant, but of course there's some price fluctuations, um, even though it's a very rural area. Um, and of course there's the, you know, seasonality also affects livestock. So it can affect, you know, dairy access as well. So th there's definitely, this is an important part of things. One of the things we did in the intervention as well is try to discuss how to maintain a diverse diet across 12 months. So in a in a in the raining season, um, you know you might have green leafy vegetables. In the dry season, what do you do? You know, so and water was an, a definite issue um, for this environment. So so trying to 
consciously bring that into intervention design. Um, because a lot of times we just say like, eat this food group without saying, how is that food group going to happen in a dry season? Um, you know, what is the family supposed to do to get the, those kinds of nutrients? So that was part of the design and the types of foods that were being discussed. Um, and that came out in the formative research. So we did some file, um, that, that pile sort exercise, we talked about kind of the different types of foods available at different times that people felt were appropriate for different age of child and so on. So that was, was helpful. Um, infection, of course, is gonna be tied to the water. Um, what we found, I didn't show you a graph, I only just mentioned it verbally, but um, the, the levels of morbidity at, at baseline when children were under 18 months um, were extremely high. Um, we did kind of a mother's report of of um, of just symptoms in a in a two week period. The, just a standard, you know, recall. Um, it was more than half of children had some kind of you know fever, cough, diarrhea, so, you know, something. Um, as they get older, it got better, um, but infection was a part of that story. Um, what we found was, um, yeah, I mean, there were changes in kind of hygiene behaviors, which we, which I didn't present too much, but kind of hand washing behaviors improved for mothers. And then if we engaged fathers, hand washing behaviors also improved for fathers. Um, so there were some improvements along the lines of wash as well. Um, looking at some of the gender stuff, the gender outcomes, of course, are really hard to measure. Um, we looked at, um, we. Th there are a few different interventions that have worked in Africa um, or, or had some good results in kind of East Africa. Um, so we kind of consulted them and their tools and their approaches. Um, there was a study in Rwanda and there's Promundo had some work. Um, there, there are some different groups um, that we tried to learn from before we started. Um, and then a lot of our assessment was similar to, um, it's a little bit similar to the WEA, the Women's in, uh, Empowerment and Agricultural um, Index, if you're familiar with that, that came from IFPRI and others. Um, so we did some modification of that. The couple's communication had to do with um, different topics um, that had to usually do with resource allocation. So money for food, decision-making about harvest. Um, you know, so we had about eight different topics that we identified for household decision-making. And then for each, we talked about, um, and this was based on the maternal report. Um, do you discuss? Are you able to give input? Um, so do you discuss at all? And then if you discuss, do you, can you give input? Um, can you, who makes a decision? Is it you, your husband or partner or both together? Um, we also asked the subjective question of, do you feel um, like your partner is listening to you when you give input? Um, we actually um, have a publication on those results so I can share the, um, link in the chat or we can distribute that later. Um, we also looked at other kinds of practices. So we looked at the gender attitudes and we looked at some practices. We also saw differences, um, interestingly in IPV, um, um, interpersonal violence, um, as well through some of the interventions. So um, there's really a lot to unpack on the, on the gender side of this, um, yeah. So, sorry, that was a very long answer. Did I get everything? Yeah, okay, thank you for very detailed information. Yeah, great. Um, and very inspiring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, yes. Hi. Uh, well, Hi. My name is Jess Fernandez from Simi Rec Fund. This is also based in Indonesia. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. Very interesting result of the study, uh, like uh, Dr. Dwi, because we also have an early childhood care, nutrition, and uh, education program that we're running here in Indonesia and Southeast Asia. Well, my question is Jess, like- I cannot um, hear you. Hello, can you hear me? 
I, I, I hear you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, my question, uh, Dr. Gunarata, is that like, um, you mentioned in one of your slides that the uh, intervention or the models did not have significant effect on the growth of the child, mm -hmm. the children. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I think I failed to hear you. Where can you attribute it? Why uh, there was no significant um, effect on the growth of the, uh, the children? And then like, uh, do you plan to follow up this kind of studies just because like maybe the growth will have longer period to, to see the impact uh, because I don't know whether the study duration is just like uh, not really that significant that you can mm -hmm. see the growth of children. Uh, right. Those are my questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yes, we saw dietary changes. Um, we didn't see growth changes. Um, what we are still analyzing right now, we actually did 24 hour recalls as well. Um, so a colleague of mine is um, looking at all the 24 hour recalls to see if the dietary diversity translates into nutrient intake, and then to see how that might then relate to, to growth or not. But honestly, I mean, growth is, as I'm sure you know, it's a tricky one. We yeah. When we started the intervention, um, the aim at, en well, at enrollment, the criteria was zero to 18 months. So the kids are already a little bit old, right? Um, growth faltering starts pretty early. Um, by the time that was baseline, by the time then the intervention started, they were still under 24 months, but they it took a couple months to collect data as well. So then the intervention is really moving beyond, you know, already kind of aging out. So um, I'm not completely shocked if we don't mm -hmm. see effects on, on linear growth. I mean, that that really takes a sustained intervention. Right. In the ideal world, it starts earlier. What I would really love to know, um, and my own personal hypothesis is that th this is a lot of behavior change, um, mm. you know, and it's it's a lot for families who are very stressed and under very difficult conditions to, you know, make changes. I would love to know about the next baby, um, mm -hmm. you know, that how how that would affect the well-being of the next baby um, in that right. family. Um, unfortunately, we're not able, at least at this time, to, to follow up with the families. You know, the study mm -hmm. ended, you know, et cetera. So, um, so we're not able to do that kind of follow up unfortunately um but and and this is a thing that i think i i debate um with my colleagues not debate it's the wrong word um i think these behavior changes are quite challenging right it's very hard to realize behavior change um and even if when we analyze nutrient intakes if we find that the nutrient intakes change but not very much i mm -hmm. i still think if you go from not really consuming a certain, you know, type of food at all to suddenly being willing to consider that this is an appropriate food for a baby, that is a change. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think that that is important in, in the long term, like both within a family, but also in a community where it becomes a little bit more normalized to feed mm -hmm. more nutrient dense foods. I didn't share this actually, but um, of course, when we looked at dietary diversity, we wanted to see exactly what food groups are leading to the increase. And what was interesting was engaging fathers and doing the bundling content together improved intake specifically of um, vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables and dairy. Mm -hmm. um, and then any intervention would improve kind of other fruit, uh, other fruit and vegetables, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily vitamin A rich, you know, like onion, tomato, whatever, those kind of things. Um, so 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 if you're thinking about nutrient intakes, I'm kind of hopeful um, for the joint intervention, um, mm -hmm. really affecting nutrient intakes in ways that just kind of um, intervening nutrition with mothers cannot do. Right, right. Yeah, definitely a lot more questions to answer, though. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I just want to um, ask whether, like, uh, this kind of the method that you have um, is Purdue. Um, Oh, you're muted, Dr. Fernandez. Um, yes, sorry, I Purdue. just want to ask. Yeah. I just want to ask whether, like Purdue, would be 
uh, willing to share this kind of intervention models to other countries to try it out, like in Indonesia, considering also that in Southeast Asia, father's involvement is not that much as far as early childhood development. So we look forward to this kind of collaboration, if ever there's a possibility to collaborate with you. Yes. Um, um, I think you have access to the slides, but if not, if I can only figure yeah, out. Yeah, we. Uh, I got it from the chat box. Yes, okay. we had the uh, PPT. Okay. Oh, you have the whole. Um, yes. Okay. Right, right. The, the last. Uh, it my. It's my um, email is just my last name at Purdue. Edu. Um, yeah. It's on the last slide, and so yes, um, I can consult with my colleagues. Um, I think it is fine to share. Of course, I'll ask them first, okay. <laughs> um, just to yeah. make sure. <laughs> but um, but that is the whole point. But uh, as you can see, it's very contextualized, right? It's very mm -hmm. much for an mm -hmm. East African right. Um, right. situation. Um, but still, yes, yeah, happy to okay. explore. Okay, thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you. Are there other questions? I'm happy to. Um, I'm just checking the chat. อันสายฝนมีคําถามจากซูนผลสนาการอยู่ในแชทบอกละท่านว่าเป็นยังจริงเจาะจงข้ามอันนะจากซีโซมงนะตอบตอบคนให้เราได้อือฮึโอ้โ
Thank you for uh, your very nice presentation today. Hello, good morning. คำถามเราวันนี้เนาะที่จะมาแนะนําเช่นเดียวกันว่าเราจะเรียนเรื่องการศึกษาเรื่องเทคนิคการศึกษาเรื่องที่ดีเพราะเราเป็นคนสนใ
sometimes when you have plan a randomized trial, you put so much effort into the randomized trial and you think the intervention is simple and this intervention was really not it, it simple. Um, so I, I think you would spend a lot of time making it appropriate to the context. Um, but if you did that, I think it can be quite, um, you know, I think it would be very interesting. Um, and and I think you all are, are well positioned to do that kind of work. You know the context very well, and you have an idea of how um, these things. We did do piloting of the interventions in different ways um, as well. So even as we developed the materials, we were having kind of testing in communities. Um, you know, again, this is my ignorance of of everything of you know all the things about Laos. I'm still learning. Um, in Tanzania, you know, even region to region, um, there are differences. Um, so the same interventions or the same types of issues that we identified in the Mara region, if you go to a different place in the same country, there would need to be some changes. Um, the place where we worked, there was a lot of um, gender inequity. Um, there was a high degree of gender-based violence, to be honest. Um, we, we knew that this was an issue, and then we tried to address it um, in the interventions. So um, even region to region and community to community in Laos, maybe that will also happen. I, I don't, you would know best. Um, yeah, so I, I think the intervention design would be very worthwhile. And, and again, there are other groups that are developing kind of gender transformative interventions that I think are like they're improving all the time. I think we, we're learning a lot from, from different attempts and um, different work in different contexts. So developing things for Laos, I think would always be great. Hi. Hi, Ninupa. That's very interesting. Uh, uh, findings from your from your study. Uh, I'm I'm so surprised with a lot of uh comparisons in, in your presentations um, between baseline and lines, and it's very interesting. Um, I I really appreciate that uh, that you share this uh, research to 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 all of us. I just would like to um. Uh, it would be it would be great if just uh you could share a little bit about what is the the most challenging issue working with fathers of the of the young child. Yes, in 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 your in your intervention. Yes, in uh, and did you find a kind of uh yeah you there there might be some kind of a cultural context uh, challenge or any 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 other conditions of challenge that that you found so far. So for 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 further intervention would would best thing of it. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it's a dangerous question as I'm talking to a father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, please, please. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Oh, so um, um oh <laughs> okay. Um yeah, oh thank you for that. So um so what are the challenges with fathers? And I'm probably speaking to a father, um, and fathers are difficult. Um, <laughs> I'm only joking a little bit. Um, it, it really, again, depends on the context. So one is kind of these kind of gender inequities, the very different roles, um, you know, um, but also a lot of variation from family to family. We had a lot of thinking about this because, um, we really wanted to look at this relationship between man and woman and how that relationship is affecting the child. And so you saw in our inclusion and exclusion criteria that we required a father to be present at least 10 months of the year. We know that there is migration for work. Um, we know that uh, fishing is an important livelihood in this region. We specifically avoided in our study region, we avoided the coastal community, the coast by coastal, I mean Lake Victoria. Um, we avoided the 
the communities that are right on the coast of Lake Victoria, because their fishing is an important source of livelihood. The men will go, you know, sometimes for one month or two months on a boat, um, and they would just be gone. So we won't have the opportunity to engage them. Um, but so, and there are sometimes fathers are not present or, um, you know, there may be marriage, there may be not marriage. Um, we didn't require that. Um, we just wanted the father to be around for the sake of the intervention. Um, even then our attendance, um, I think the one of the big challenges was data collection. You know, we did collect a lot of data because we had a lot, a very complex theory of change. The burden of data collection, um, the you know, we got about 76 or so percent of fathers at Endline compared to 80, mid 80s percent for mother and child. So certainly the participation in the data collection was lower. The attendance was not bad. It may not have been exactly the same as the mothers, but what the positive side of this is that um, you know, th this content was very new to fathers. Um, uh, this is another thing that's very cultural, um, you know, especially in the first year of life in these communities in this study region. Um, the mother is considered very important for the baby. Um, sometimes the father feels that it, it's not appropriate for him, that this is really um, and it's not, this is not a gender equity thing. It's just valuing the mother's importance for a baby and saying that the, if the father might feel that he doesn't really know, um, that he doesn't have the knowledge of a mother and the mother is essential for the baby. And um, so sometimes the father is not comfortable and it's not the cultural thing for him to engage, especially when the baby is very young. Um, and they don't usually have any knowledge sometimes about you know, what is good for baby, what is child development, you know, milestones and things like that. Um, so many fathers actually enjoyed learning about some of these things that are not commonly discussed with them. Um, that's not part of, you know, extension or health services. So, so they enjoyed learning. The other nice thing about child development is that it, it's, um, it's easier to see results than nutrition. So in nutrition, if you feed your baby very well and they grow one more centimeter, I mean, you may not even know, right? But if you engage in play and communication and stimulation practices with the baby, you will see the baby respond um, to that positive interaction. Um, so a lot of ECD interventions, I think sometimes, um, you get a quick result sometimes, and that's very inf supporting, you know, enforcing to the parents, um, both mother and father. They like to see it. They enjoy seeing their, you know, baby developing. Um, the outcomes are much more easy to realize, to see, um, compared to nutritional outcomes. Um, so, so yes, um, Yes, there are challenges. Yes, there's probably in our process data ways that we can think of to improve. Um, that's not an analysis we've done yet, but we collected a lot of process data um, and we can use that. And we know that there are going to be fathers that are excluded um, because they are not as present for various reasons than the ones that we selected into our study. Yes, that's very clear. Thank you very much, Nilupa. Sure Thanks thing. for sharing. Yeah. And Vila Hau, Mun Mud Lano, Yon, and soon Doctor Yon Pin and Kao Pop Jai Ling. ที่บรรดาแขกที่มีเกียรติทางวิทยาศาสตร์ที่เขาโอนคําสมุดในทางออนไลน์ขอบคุณครับขอบคุณครับขอบคุณครับขอบคุณครับขอบคุณครับขอ
เรตูปาที่มาให้ความหู้ในครั้งนี้การสัมมนาในครั้งนี้เห็นว่าในฮักหู้ข้อมูลอันดีทางด้านวิชาการเดวราทานที่เป็นนักวิชาการของชาวปกเราเขาก็อาจสามารถนําเอามาปรับปรุงได้ประยุกต์ใช้เพื่อเป็นหลักฐานในการพัฒนาเบียงานโฆษณาการและเบียงานพัฒนาเด็กให้มีความเข้านาแต่ฟังอย่างยิ่งว่าข้าพเจ้าได้ปรบมือทีมงานสาการไก่ลาวเนาะจะได้มีโอกาสพับพังได้เข้าวมการสมมนาที่มีผลประโยชน์แบบนี้ในครั้งต่อไปแต่ทานี้ข้าพเจ้าแนะนำคณะสุนทรการกระทรวงสาธารณสุขขอเวฟวันในวัฒนธรรมแค่กิมิคิดทานี้ทักใช่ที่เขาวมความประชุมในวันนี้ทางมีเนในความประชุมในทางออนไลน์จงมีสุขภาพแข็งแห้งมีพลังใจสมบูรณ์มีผลสําเร็จในนาทีการงานมีความประสุขในชีวิตของผู้เนาะข้าพเจ้าคือโอกาสนี้ขอปิดการสัมมนาครั้งนี้ยังเป็นทางการนับแต่มีนาทีไปต้นไปขอขอบใจ Thank you so much for having me. I in in those kind words. I I very much enjoyed this. Thanks. So thank you, Nilupa. Bye bye. Have a good round. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Nilupa. Thank, thank you for your excellent thank sharing, you Nilupa. Much. See you next time. See you soon. See you next time. Bye bye. 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 Thank you, thank you, Nilupa. Bye bye. Good to see you.